Welcome to the Level 1 Corporate Finance Summary video series. This video is a summary of the reading on dividends and share repurchases. Broadly speaking, when we talk about dividends, one category is where cash is given to shareholders. Another category is where shareholders get more shares. On this slide, we talk about cash to shareholders. Now, when we talk about cash to shareholders, there are different ways in which a company can pay dividends. One is a regular cash dividend. Here, a cash is distributed to shareholders on a regular basis. So you might have a company which says that every six months they will pay a certain dividend. Most dividend paying companies strive to maintain or increase their dividends. Generally speaking, increasing dividends indicate that a company is growing and willing to share profits. So increasing dividends is generally viewed as a positive sign. Another way in which companies can pay dividends is an extra or special dividend. This is also called an irregular dividend. Dividend is paid by a company which does not normally pay dividends or a payment to shareholders which supplements regular cash dividends. So a company might on average pay a dividend of 50 cents per share and then if the company has excess cash and wants to distribute it can tell the shareholders that this year we are giving an extra or special or irregular dividend. The benefit of irregular dividend is that it does not set an expectation. So the company has flexibility in the future as to how much dividend to pay. And then the final category here is a liquidating dividend where worst case scenario is a company is shutting down. So it pays, it settles the liabilities and then what is left is paid to the shareholders. Even in situations where the dividend paid exceeds accumulated retained earnings, that is also called a liquidating dividend because the company is then eating into its own equity. When cash is paid to shareholders, so in the form of any of these sorts of dividends, assets and equity go down. Do liabilities or debt go down? No. So assets or equity go down, which means that your various leverage ratios such as debt to equity will go up. So debt to equity will go up, debt to assets go up. So it is safe to say that almost all your ratios will become worse when you pay dividends. Next we come to stock splits and stock. In a stock dividend, a company distributes additional shares. Normally it's between 2 and 10% of shares outstanding. As a shareholder, you get more shares, but each share is worth less. The proportionate ownership does not change and all else equal capital structure and financial ratios do not change because the proportions stay the same. With the stock split, you can have 2 for 1, 3 for 1, 3 for 2, so there are different kinds of splits. The most common one is a 2 for 1 split. Each share is split into 2. This is economically similar to a 10% this is economically similar to a 100% stock dividend. Now I use the term economically similar because effectively from a shareholder perspective, a 100% dividend or a two for one split are not different. But from an accounting perspective, there are differences in the way they are handled, but that is not something for us to worry about. The major reason that companies have stock splits is to maintain the share price in a certain range that, that makes the shares affordable. As a general point, Academic research suggests that market value tends to increase because dividends and splits are taken as a positive signal. If earnings don't increase, market value returns to an earlier level. So this seems to conflict what we are saying here. The top statement is really saying that all else equal, assuming no real signals are going out, then there is no difference in the wealth of shareholders. But the second point is saying is when a company announces a two for one split, then that's taken as positive. positive and then the share price goes up a little. But if that positive signal is not justified, so a year later, the earnings have not really increased, then the share price will come back down. Dividends, payment chronology. When a company pays dividends, the first thing it does is it declares that it is paying a certain dividend. This will happen after a board meeting. So a company says that for this quarter, we are paying this much dividend on this date. 
it will also announce an ex dividend date that is the date on which the people who buy the shares will not have the right to get the dividend anybody who owns the share up to that date or before that date will receive a dividend those who have the share on the ex dividend date or those who buy on ex dividend date or later will not receive the dividend so you will notice that on the ex dividend date the share price comes down roughly by the amount of the dividend and then there is more detail on this at level 2 Two days typically after the ex-dividend date is the holder of record date. Shareholders listed in the company records will be deemed to have ownership of the shares for the purposes of receiving upcoming dividends. And then the payment date is when the dividend checks are mailed out. Share repurchases. Broadly speaking, there are two ways in which a company gives cash to shareholders. One is cash dividends of different forms. And then the other way is where a company buys back shares from shareholders. This is also called a treasury stock operation and we've seen this in FRA. Company buys back its own shares, treasury shares or treasury stock. So this is a treasury, so the shares that are bought back are called treasury shares or treasury stock. This reduces equity. It also reduces cash if the company is using its own cash to buy back shares. Not considered for dividends, there is no voting and we do not use this number in coming up with EPS. So notice when we came up with EPS, we subtracted the treasury stock. How can shares be bought back? One way to do it is simply buy in the open market. This gives the company flexibility because the company can time the buyback. Next is fixed price tender offer can be accomplished quickly but usually has to offer a premium pro rata if necessary. So the company offers a price that is let's say 5% higher than market price. This can be done relatively quickly but it will be costly for the company because it's paying well above market price. Then the third is a Dutch auction. Tender offer with a range of acceptable prices. For example, if shares are trading at 50 company could offer to buy back 2 million shares in the 51 to 53 range. This can be accomplished quickly, usually at a price lower than the fixed price tender offer. So the fixed price tender offer in this scenario might be 53. By making a range between 51 and 53, the company will try to buy back all the shares at the lowest possible price such that they can buy back all 2 million shares. And then finally, repurchased by direct negotiation usually with large shareholders in this case wealth is transferred from the average shareholder to the large shareholder because the large shareholder is receiving money that is much more than the regular share price this is not very common though from a testability perspective i'd say this slide is extremely important you need to know the financial statement impact of repurchases share repurchases decrease assets because cash goes down and also decrease equity. If share repurchase is financed with cash, then liquidity ratio decreases. Why is that? Liquidity ratio is current assets over current liabilities. Cash is as current as you can get. So this ratio comes down. Debt to asset ratio goes up because assets are lower. So the ratio is up. And for the same reason, debt to equity ratio increases. So notice all ratios become worse. When these two ratios go up, that means they are becoming worse. The company is becoming more risky. And then in the regular lecture, we work through examples to explain this. But here, I'll just give you the fact. If the earnings yield, which is the reciprocal of the price earnings, is greater than the after-tax yield on funds, then EPS will increase. What does this mean? If a company is using its own money to buy back shares, does EPS go up or down? The answer is that let's say that your own money is sitting idle you're not earning any return on that money then eps which is net income over number of shares this ratio will go up because you're using your own money it's not giving you any return so net income doesn't change shares go down and the ratio goes up but what if your own money was earning you 10 percent and your earnings yield, which is earnings divided by price, is only 8%. Then, if you do a buyback, net income comes down, shares come down, but net income comes down more in percentage terms, and the EPS will decrease. 
So remember this relationship. What if you are borrowing money to buy back shares? If the earnings yield is greater than the after-tax cost of borrowing money, then EPS will increase, else EPS will decrease. What about the impact on book value per share? If you buy the stock and the stock price is greater than the original book value per share, this is the book value per share before you bought back the stock. If you think about it, what is stock? What is stock price? It is the market value per share. So if the market value per share is greater than the book value per share, then the book value per share is going down. And the way you remember this is, is it good or bad to buy something expensive? It is bad. So if you are buying a stock that is more expensive than the book value, then the bad thing happens, which is the book value per share comes down. On the other hand, if the stock price is less than the original book value per share, then the book value per share goes up. So if you buy something that's great value, then the book value per share goes up. In theory, the choice between cash dividends and repurchases has no impact on shareholder wealth. There is a full-fledged example in our regular lecture that we cover to explain this concept, but here I'm just stating the fact. All else equal, if a company pays a dividend or if a company buys back shares, the shareholder wealth is not impacted. If you found this lecture helpful, then I'll be very grateful if you can do three things for me. Number one, like this video. Number two, like my Facebook page. And number three, visit analystforum.com and there add my logo to your studying with profile. You can see this slide for help on how to do that. Thank you very much and good luck with your studies.